doing something. You have this quadratic sequence and it has the second difference of 10. The second difference is 10. The first two terms equal are equal. That is term mm. one equals term two. And they said also term one plus term two plus term three is 28. And they then said show that the general term of the sequence is that one there. It's five n squared minus 15 n plus 16. Okay, so we actually will do the question over here. Right, so how do we do this question? Right, so we shall start the solution anywhere. We can start the solution here. Right, so we are looking at this solution right now. Right, we're looking at this solution. Right, looking at this solution, we have the following. Right, we have the following. So what do we have? We have the first two terms, right, because they said the first two terms are equal to each other, so we can make the first term x and then the second term x so that the first two terms are equal to each other, and then we have the third term of the sequence, and then uh, this pattern um, obviously continues there, like that. Okay, so we have that. Um, right. We continue. Okay, if we have these, what next then do we say? Right, so we can get the difference here and say, um, we have this, um, we have this. Um, what, do, what is x minus x? It's zero. And then we have p3 minus x. And then you have these minus that. What is this minus that? K3 minus x minus zero. Okay, the second difference will therefore become what? 10. And as a consequence, the realization is therefore that 2a. Okay, because now when we get to this point, we remember something, I need to state that. So we remember something, what do we remember? Um, right, we need to remember that this one is 2a, so 2a is 10, and then to, this one is uh, 3a plus b equals this one, and to a plus b plus c equals the first one. Right, so if 2a is 10, what does it mean? You divide both sides by 2, 10 divided by 2 gives us what? Gives us 5, so we have achieved oh. that one. Okay. Um, Um, okay, we continue. Right, so it therefore means at this point we have 3a, right? So we have 3a plus b equals zero. If 3a plus b equals zero, but a is already equal to what? a is already equal to five. So it is three into this plus b um okay so what do we then get okay um right so we continue um right we continue what do we get okay so from these we're able to see therefore that b equals minus 15 okay mm. which is this one Right? Remember the examiner just said show that the general term is that. So now, after this, we want to, it remains to find the value of what? Of C. <coughs> right, how do we find therefore the value of C? Right, to find the value of C is obviously a very interesting thing. Um, right, and I'm sure you can share your own um, thoughts on that. Um, um, right, so, right, so what do we get? Okay, yeah, what do we get? Okay, what do you think you can, how do you think you can get the value of C? Okay, we need to talk. 
Okay. A plus B plus C, which is going to be plus five C. plus negative fifteen. Mm -hmm. Equals to C. Equals to C. Okay. You think we can use A plus B plus C? Okay, because we can. You know that A plus B plus C is X, right? Well. We yes. Um. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're just talking here. Okay, so your okay, yeah. Anyone, <laughs> you talk, you talk. Doesn't matter, but yeah, we need to. Okay, so we know therefore that so C is the tricky one. C is the tricky one because we need to find the value of C, but how do we find the value of C? So to find the value of C, the couple of realizations you need to make, and a couple of things you know, A plus we need to use the equation A plus B plus C equals X, because that is the equation you always use. We always use to find C. We always use A because to find A, what do we use? We 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 start from bottom up when we do quadratic what quadratic sequences. So we start with the two A from which from the two A we get A, from the three A plus B we get what? B. And then from the A plus B plus C, we get C. But this says A plus B plus C equals X. But we don't know X. So now it means the first thing we need to do, we need to get the value of X. Because A plus B plus C is equal to X. That is the equation. Mm. Right. So how do we get the value of X? I know you can have clever ways to do this. Right. So at this point, it means but but we know that T3 minus X minus zero. If we subtract these, this one from this one, yes, we subtract, we say T3 minus X minus zero, <laughs> the answer is 10. So which means T3 minus X equals what? 10. So we have that. We have that. So what do we get out of these? What do we get out of these? Okay. Now, at this point, we have another <laughs> dilemma. What is T3 here? Because we want to get X, but what is this T3? So this T3 now is also presenting a, li a little, a little what? A little issue. So we continue with this now. Okay, we use this equation here. That's why they gave us this equation. Okay. Um, however, however, we know that T1 plus T2 plus T3 is equal to what? 28. Mm. Okay, they gave mm. that's why they gave us this equation. What is term one? Term one is only X. So we put X here. What is term two? It's X. So we put X there. Okay, so you put X there. Right, and term two is X. What is term three? So we need to get term three out of this. Right, so which means therefore that term three is X plus 10. So term three is X plus 10 equals 28. Okay. Let's see what this is giving to us. Which means now if we add the three X's, we get three X. What is 28 minus 10? It is exactly 18. You divide 18 by three, you, you get what? Six. So it means therefore X is six. After these, we're able to see that if X is six, then we can come back to the equation that we use. Mm. We can come back to the equation that we use to get C. What equation do we use? We use uh, we use this one first, this one, and that one. Always we do that. So now we we thus have that A plus B plus C is equal to X. Okay, because that is the one we need to use to get C always. So we need to write the pattern like this and we always work from bottom up. Right. So what is our A? Our A is exactly five. 
our B is minus 15. Our C is what we want. Our X is what? Is six. From these, what do we achieve? Right, so we are, we have five minus 15, which is minus 10. And then you move it across, it becomes what? 16. Right, so at this point, um, if this is the case, um, what do we then achieve? Okay, from this we go up. Right, so we have that uh, this one, the general formula for the quadratic sequences is this one, uh, uh, plus bn, plus bn, okay, not the squared. Right, so you have that. plus bn, plus c, which means that tn is a n squared. What is a? It is exactly 5 n squared. The b is minus 15 n. The c is what? Is 16. It's exactly what the examiner wanted. It's exactly what they wanted. They said, show that tn is this, and we just got exactly that okay so i know there are many ways to do this question but always when dealing with quadratic sequences you always write like this and make sure we work from bottom up to avoid confusion but also we sometimes find ourselves with many equations and we'll be like okay but what do we do with these equations in the end okay next question right the next question is we're still giving the same information but i've split the question into separate parts um, to allow easy cons consumption and for us to be able to break it down. Right, and the question 3.2, because we're doing 3.1, is that is 216, I term in this, in this sequence, justify your answer with the necessary calculations. Right, is 216 a term in this sequence? Obviously, we recall that. Right, we recall that um, T sub n is actually from the previous question, 5n squared minus 15n plus 16. So you have 216 equals 5n squared minus 15 plus 16. Uh, that Plus sixteen minus two sixteen. You you uh, deal with this, okay? So obviously, want to know if two sixteen is is the term in the sequence. Um. Uh, so we substitute, we equate two sixteen to the general term, uh, from which we're able to get a uh, five n squared minus fifteen n. Um, sixteen minus two sixteen is minus two hundred. Call zero. You divide by five, which means n squared minus three uh, n minus forty equals zero. Okay, so you have mm. this. What are the factors of n squared? N and n. The factors of minus forty that give minus three, minus eight plus five. Goodness me. Okay, we divide the board like this. Getting n equals eight, uh, n equals minus five, which means that obviously this one is not valid because the number of terms cannot be negative. The number of terms can only be positive. So which means that the eighth term is actually um, 216. Right, so yes, now um, is this one a term in the sequence to justify your answer? With, uh, with the necessary calculations, uh, yes. Um, 216 is a term, um, is a term in the sequence. Right, is a term in the sequence. Okay. Now we proceed to the next question. Right, in the next question, we will look at graphs and more graphs. So at this point, what we're looking at is how to deal with uh, these graphs here. Okay. Um, given the function p of x equals one third, 
to the power x, is p a decreasing or is, is, it, is p an increasing or a decreasing function, blah, 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 and so on. And, and I've decided to break this exam question down into digestible pieces because it's quite lengthy, okay? So we first will look at 4.1.1. Right, looking at 4.1.1, we have this same uh, function. And the question is, is P an increasing or decreasing function? We answer the question. Right, so what do we know at this point? Right, so there are two things you need to know. Um, there's a, a function, which is the exponential function. So if you have the exponential function like this, if it, it happens that the base is bigger than one, a is bigger than one, um, or if it happens that the base is, is between zero and one. So in both cases, uh, what do we do? In both cases, uh, what do we do? Right, so you continue. Okay, anyone? <laughs> I'm going sometimes I'm gonna give you a chance to share your thoughts. What do you think about this question? Anyone? Okay. You can hear me guys, right? <laughs> You're scared yes. of the question. You're scared of the question. Okay, because they asked it in June this year and it's there in November. A question like this. This question is there in what? In November. So, okay, I'm just, uh, uh, yeah, I'm just teasing you because I just want to see what you think, you know? Um, Because obviously we shall do it together. And I know that you guys are scared of getting <laughs> things wrong, you know? Because obviously, I mean, you you wish to get 100%, it's fair. But now those who get 100% are those who try and what? You try and fail, but never fail to try and that is what that is the song and this song is very very important you see right so anyone i'm giving you two minutes right two minutes two minutes i'm giving you two minutes is it too difficult <laughs> so even, how many marks is it worth? Only one mark. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. I was saying, so there are two cases. If A is bigger than one, the, the base A is bigger than one, or the base A is what? Is uh, the base A is bigger than one? or the base A is a fraction between zero and one. Like this one, one over three is 0 0.3 recurring. So it is a fraction and therefore it lies between zero and one. In each case, the function is decreasing here. And if this is uh, bigger than one, an example when it's bigger than one is the one we have at hand, like one third to the power x. But if it's bigger than one here, it can be like three to the power X. So this increases. Okay, so. Um, right, so in, at this point, because you can see that this base is a fraction, is between zero and one. So this function is what? It's decreasing. Next question. Right, the next one is they ask for the inverse and I can tell you the, this question is there. Um, they're not gonna put one third there, they're gonna put maybe three. Instead of one over three, they're gonna put three. Or they're gonna put one over four. Or just one half. Instead of one over three, they're gonna put one half normally. Okay, in November. So then they ask you to say determine P inverse. Uh, P to the power minus one, which is the inverse of P, in the form y equals that. So this is easy. What do we do? 
Right, to do this one first, we write down the formula that is given. So we route down P like this. Mm -hmm. P is, has the equation Y equals one third triple X. And then the next thing is now we write the inverse like this. The inverse is the plate of Y here. In the place of this Y, we put X. In the place of X, we put Y. So it becomes like this. Okay, so this is becomes the log of x base one of the three equals that. So we make y the subject. If you make y the subject, therefore it becomes y equals log x base one of the three. In this observation, it's very important for us. So because this is already the inverse. So if this is the case, then we can write from here that this is exactly P inverse of X, um, which is equal to the log of X base one third. So write in the form that the inverse. So you just put here, it is the log of X base one third. Okay. And therefore this is the answer and we get the two marks. And we get our distinction, we go to the university and we become medical doctors, we become engineers and so on. And we move to the next question. Okay, now we need to learn how to write down things. How do we write down this one here? Write down the domain of P inverse. Right. How do you write the domain of P inverse? What is the P inverse? So you recall that recall that P inverse of X is the log of X base one of the three. So that. Um, what, this is the inverse, then we need to write down its domain, the domain of the log. What is the domain of the log? The log is only real, it's only real for um, the positive things and so the positive things, so the positive X values. So the domain has to do with the set of the X values. So X is positive, but X is what? Is an element of the set of real numbers. So this is the domain. So X is positive and X is an element of the set of real numbers, okay? So we get this one here. We get this one here. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. Okay, all right, I must indicate that uh, there are a couple of ways to write the answer, obviously. Um, it might not exactly be like this, but uh, it can be um, a different version. In which case, you can write it uh, like that, or you can write it differently. How else can it be written? So it can be written in so many ways, right? So if you do not want to write it like this, it may be written as X is an element of the interval from zero to infinity, like this. X is an element of the set of real numbers, etc. that kind of thing. So um, these both uh, answers are that. So you can write uh, as the top or you can write as the bottom answer. Okay, so we have that. Okay. Right. Um, you need to write down the equation of the asymptote of P of X minus five. What is the equation of the asymptote of that? Okay, this equation is done in grade 10. And at grade 10, the way this is done, at grade 10, you are taught about y equals a to the power x plus um, that, okay. No matter this is how it's written at grade 10. Right, so we just go back to grade 10, go back in time 
at grade 10. I know that we had metric. But at grade 10, now we say A, and then we put P to the power X, and we put Q like this. Your teacher might have jumped it, whatever the, the, the reason. Okay, but now the, the this one is, a, is an exponential function. Right, being an exponential function, a couple of things you need to realize. It is an exponential function with what? It's an exponential function um, with the asymptote um, right so the asymptote is actually the y it is the constant so at this point uh, the asymptote is going to be what the asymptote is going to be the q right so um, the asymptote here is y equals q so you come here p of x equals one over three the power of that. So which means that you have this one to the power x minus five. Okay, the examiner just said just write p of x minus five. And then write down the equation of the asymptote. What is the equation of the asymptote? So the equation of the asymptote Is uh, is the y? So it is y equals the the constant. So y equals minus five. That is the equation of the of the asymptote. So the exponential function therefore does not have any other asymptote. There's only one, and it's given by the constant, the the q that's there. Okay, the, the q that's there. So we continue. Um, now, it's also important for us to be in a position to uh, write down the equations of asymptotes, uh, right of the rectangular um, hyperbola. Right, so if we are looking at the rectangular hyperbola, what are the asymptotes? So there are two of them, you look at the denominator. So you start and let the x minus 1 equal to 0 and have y equals 2, which means x equals 1 and y equals 2. So in the, at this point, what are the equations of the asymptotes? These are the ones. Obviously, this one here is the vertical asymptote. And this one is the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so this is what we have. We have the vertical asymptote and we have the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so we have solved this one. Move to the next one. It must be important for us to be in a position to do a couple of calculations like your things. Um, right. Um, okay, obviously, how do we do this one? How do we do this one? Google. Right, so to get the um, x-intercept. Um, right, to get the x-intercept. Good things, yes, we let y be equal to what? Be equal to zero, isn't it? Okay, that's correct. So we let y to be equal to zero. And if we let y to be equal to zero, it means that if we have the equation that is f of x equals four over this uh, plus two, y is already zero, isn't it? Okay, so we have this plus two. Okay. In this case, you transpose the two, it becomes minus over this. You cross multiply. So minus two is x minus one um, equals four. Okay. So that you distribute, which is minus two x plus two equals four, which is equals to two. So you divide, which means x is equal to minus one. 
Right, and therefore this is does the, the, the x-intercept, in which case, therefore, the x-intercept can also be written as a point like this, when x is 0, y is minus 2, um, is the x-intercept. Okay, is the x-intercept. So we, we have this. All right, next question. Right, so the next question is that we continue and solve more things. Sketch a graph of F. Right, sketch a graph of F. Label all asymptotes and indicate the intercepts with the axis. So now we need to draw the sketch. But as we draw the sketch, we need to realize that from the previous questions we did, we got the x intercepts, we got the asymptotes, we also got the the uh, the your x intercepts, so the asymptotes. Um, we got those, but there's something we did not do, and what is it that we did not calculate? We did not find the y-intercept. So, but now oh, to I... sketch the graph, yeah, um, the examiner did not ask us to do that. So, as part of our solution, we can't draw the graph if we do not know the y-intercept. So, we must do it. The examiner did not ask us to calculate that, but we need to, uh, okay, indicate intercepts with with the what with the axis. So, and this axis is plural because if you speak of only the x axis, and then you speak of the y axis, here you speak of x and y axis. So we have this. Okay, so now at this point, what is the y-intercept? So to get the y-intercept, we simply let x be equal to zero in the equation. So it's pretty easy. So we put um, zero there, and we have this one, zero minus one plus two, which is exactly minus four plus two, which is exactly minus two. So if this is the case, what are we getting here? We're able to achieve a couple of things, but we already know that at this point, um, we can be able to uh, sketch the graph. So we need to uh, draw our coordinate axis like this. Our vertical x equals one. Um, y equals two. When we have this. Okay, we, we got uh, this is the y-intercept and you can see when x is zero, y is minus two. So now we have this one um, here, it's gonna be at y equals minus two. The x-intercept we got at minus one. So the graph therefore is gonna be like this sort of. Okay. And then now we have another piece that's gonna be actually sitting exactly there, like this. Okay, so this is the graph, but obviously we know that this is the um, y-axis and this is the x-axis. So those are the kinds of things we need to um, remember. So these are the graphs and functions, but I'm sure that I'm gonna give you a lot of problems on the graphs and functions. So you need to get ready because the graphs and functions are actually coming. So um and um you need to be prepared i'm gonna give you questions of the prelims from all the nine provinces on the graphs and functions okay so we're gonna set time we're gonna discuss that but that session is gonna be a discussion session so i'm gonna say, share the questions you wanna i'm gonna give you turns like you tell me what you think about the Eastern Cape question, about the Gauteng question, about the Western Cape question, about the Mpumalanga question, the Limpopo question and so on. Okay, so we have drawn the graphs and we're done. Next question. Right, we also must be in a position to use our graphs, to use your graph to determine the values of X for which this is the case. How do we solve an inequality like this? which involves a rational function. So let's continue with this one. How do we solve this? 
How do we solve these? Well, to solve this one, um, we need to just remember the graph and to realize that the graph was like this, but the graph was also cutting like this. The graph was cutting here at minus one, there at minus two. So here it was cutting like this. Here it was cutting like this. For x is one, y is two, and this one is like that. Um, right, so we have these. Okay, if you have these, um, what do we have? Right, so we're interested in the in the in the solving this, but now look at the fact that this is x minus one is greater or equal to minus two, which means it is um, x minus one plus two is greater or equal to zero. Okay, and this therefore this means that we're just looking at the same graph here because this is actually f of x greater or equal to zero. So we're looking at this function um, there, but when it is greater or equal to zero uh, above, so we are here above here, right there, here, there. But also here it's greater because greater means it is positive or zero and the graph is negative over there, okay. Or as a consequence, what is the actual meaning of these here? So these would mean a couple of things, but it would actually therefore mean that we have the following. When is it uh, greater or equal to zero? There are two parts. When we are at minus one, it is zero because of the x-intercept, but now it proceeds to the left of minus one. And then it also proceeds to the right of minus one. So um, what is then the answer to this here? So, um, which means x is less or equal to minus one. Okay, when it's equal to minus one, it is equal to zero, but when it is less, it goes up. So when x is less than minus one, the function is positive. But it's also positive when we start from one here. Okay, so when you start from one here, Right, so um, so when x is bigger, when x is actually bigger than one, okay. So when x is bigger than one, because one is the um, the asymptote. Um, right. Um, right. So um. So we continue, um, right? Um, uh, right, so this is the answer. Because when x is bigger than one, the function is above. But when x is less or equal to minus one, it's also above. So um, we have that x is less or equal to minus one and or x is bigger than one. Okay, so it's here and, and also there. So uh, this is exactly what we get. Okay. So um, this is what we have. So we have answered this question, but this question can also be written in terms of sets. So you can use the uh, set builder notation. You can use um, other uh, notations to write the answer. Okay, because we're supposed to just use this to determine the values of that. So we have that. Okay, so okay. next question. Determine the equation of the axis of symmetry of this function that has a negative gradient 
So how to find the equation of the axis of symmetry of this? Okay, we need to get our hands dirty. We need to start working very hard. As I told you, I'm bringing all the provincial exams that came in September this year. You need to make sure that you guys can do both papers one and two for all provinces. Um, and so if you can do all the nine papers, that's 18 exams. It's math, paper one, nine provinces, and paper two, nine provinces. They have that. So now they've given us this f of uh, x minus two. So we plug it in there. So this is f of x, which is um, four x minus one plus two. Right, um, we have x minus two here, which is four. In the place of x, so you have x minus two, this minus one. Okay, look at this. This is a little bit tricky to the learners uh, because now yeah. wherever there is x here, wherever there is x here, we put x minus two. So wherever there is x here, we put x minus two, but wherever there is x here, we put x minus two. So which means therefore we have x minus two, which is exactly x minus three plus two. Okay, so the couple of things that are important. Um, so what do we have here? Right, so what we have here is that um, I want to get the equation of the axis of symmetry, but now we have the point. Point of intersection. The point of intersection of the asymptotes. Right, so where do the asymptotes meet? So they intersect at 3, 2. Okay, if they intersect at 3, 2, then um, the axis of symmetry, so there are two of them. So you always have y equals to plus or minus x plus c. So you just choose plus or minus. So at this point, um, so this one here, they give these are axes of symmetry. Right, so right, so you can either choose one of them. Each one is an axis of symmetry. Right, so um, you can split it up into the negative and the positive. Right, so if you split it up into the positive and the negative, what do we get? We get exactly that one there. We get, we get exactly that. So this is therefore can be split up. Uh, right. Okay, so this can be split up into y equals x plus c. And these can be split up into minus x plus what? Plus c. So at the end, we need the one with the negative gradient. So we're going to use this one. Um, right. At this point uh, at where um, it passes through this one here. So it passes through. This pass uh, passes through. It passes through the point uh, three two. So why is two? Okay, we have this because this is our x and that's our y. Okay, so our y is two and our x is three. So if we transpose everything, we see that c is equal to five. So you have this. Our c is five, and that is the answer to this. Okay, that is the answer to this. So, um, we continue. All right. Um, that is the equation of the exosymmetry that has um, a negative gradient. How does this exosymmetry work? Okay, I'm going to just comment on the graph here. We drew the graph like this, and we had an asymptote there. We had an asymptote through one, and the graph was passing through like this. No. Okay, it was passing through x equal to minus one and two. So let me just draw a careful one here. So 
Right. So the graph was actually passing through like this. Goodness me. Passing through this way. Y and X. So. For, right, so you'd have this one which is with a negative gradient. So it's gonna actually pass through the asymptote. And then um there's another one. Obviously here when X is that, so uh, right, so you have that. So it is the one that is gonna have a negative gradient, so the equation of this one. Uh, there is exactly y equals uh, minus x plus five, but it passes through the point of intersection of the of the of the asymptotes of the rectangular parabola, and it has a negative slope, so it slopes down. Okay, right. So we need to get our end state because we need to change you guys. I need to make sure that we come back with level seven from the exam venues, so we cannot accept to get anything less than level seven, and that is the spirit. We need to work at night. We need to have these class discussions at 8, 10 at night on the days that you are free, okay? 8 to 10 at night, later than that, 10 to 12, midnight, we need to have these classes twice a week. Okay, I'm just letting you know because you need to think, you need to think about this. You need to allocate the time so that you can stay awake on some of the days at night. Um, You can use Saturdays, and you can use Sundays, we need to get work hard. Okay, now here's another question that came in June this year. And this question, a question like this is coming in November. So it must not surprise you because this is just how the November paper is gonna be. But now you need to take it seriously and think about it because they said in question five, the graphs of the functions, f of x is minus into x plus three, um, all squared plus four, uh, right, and the g of x equals x plus five. This has been given to you. And so you have been asked to, um, to do a couple of things. Here's the full question, but I've broken this question down to digestible pieces. So, um, right, um, we are gonna look at the first one, 1.1, 1 .1, uh, with 3.5.1, and then we look at the next one and so on and so forth. Let's look at 5.1. Uh, write down the coordinates of the turning point of F. Okay, I'm giving you two minutes. Anyone? Um, right, anyone? <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna involve you guys. I know that you it's not that you don't know anything, you know something. Um um right? Anyone? Okay, can you can three and four? Yes. Four it's minus three and four. Well done there. So obviously we're looking at the fact that what you have in 5.1 is the answer. We have that um, f of x is actually minus into x plus three squared plus what? Plus four. And what we are doing here is we are um, writing down the coordinates of the turning point of f. So the coordinates of the turning point of f are already seen from this form, which is uh, x minus into minus three plus four. Um, the turning point. So the turning point uh, will have to be the minus three. You must put minus minus, and then the number that sits here, which is exactly what, which is exactly four. Right, the coordinate cannot set the turning point here. They are exactly minus three and four. And that is the answer. Okay. So we go on. Next question. Right. So the next question is just one mark. And as I said, sometimes I'm gonna engage your thoughts. Anyone? Um 5.2 says write down the range. 
the range of F. The graph is there. I'm giving you like two minutes. I know it's one mark. It's too easy. Um, right, so anyone? Okay. All right. Right. This is too difficult, this one. Um, because I'm not getting an answer from you, any any of you guys. You are two guys on the line, you know. I know I know that you don't know each other. I'm just assuming that import does not know Waruna. Okay, so you forgive me because um, I'm trying to make sure that you guys think because I need to exercise your minds. I know you are still learning. I know you are still learning, but I must give you a chance to think. Because if you do, if he, if if I if we have a soccer player who is gonna play for the national team, and then this soccer player does not get into the pitch, and then we expect this soccer player to succeed, you know, it doesn't quite look right, you know, because this soccer player. If we, if we, I'm a coach because I'm 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 what I'm doing here is coaching. I'm coaching, and you guys must be fit at the end of the coaching process, and I must train the people because if I don't let these players get on the pitch, whoo, they're gonna be too fat. They're gonna sit on the benches and keep eating, 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 and then when it's time to play, they won't even be able to run. You see, now they'll be like, how have they been coached? The truth is they'll be knowing everything, but they will not be able to run because they never ran during the coaching process. So they need to run. So you need to run and try the range of this. Right? Anyway, I'm just teasing you guys. But now, yeah, we need to work hard. That's my point. So we're looking at 5.2 now. 5.2, you need to write down the range of F. So we look at this function F. So the range is characterized by the turning point. The turning point has the coordinates here. We have seen that the turning point has the coordinates minus three and four. And so the range is going to begin from here. It's going to begin from there and look at part and consider and continue with part of the graph. But this graph is going down. So the range is y is y is going down. How do you say? going down you say y is less than or equal to the y value there which is what which is exactly four okay um right so we continue okay we continue Okay, so this is the answer, um, right? So, yes, or we can say that um, it starts from four to what? Um, to negative infinity, right? So in other words, you can also say y is because it goes to minus infinity. So, but when you write these intervals, then you start from minus infinity, you start from the smallest one, because now um, negative infinity is very small because it's negative. It's smaller than a positive four. So, which means you're gonna start from minus infinity to four. So in other words, you can write any of the answers. You can write that, that one or this one, all right. Next question. Okay, this one, the answers have been given in 5.3. Um, right, so um, you need to show that the coordinates of A and B, but now we can see that first and foremost, A and B are just points of what? 
points of intersection, all right? So if A and B actually are points of intersection, what do we do with the points of intersection? So now we need to equate them. So the answer to 5.3 would be as follows. So we'll add f of x be g of x. So f of x is x plus 3 squared plus 4. The g is x plus 5. So you square these. So this is x squared plus 6x plus 9 plus 4, which is x plus 5 which is x squared minus 6x minus 9 plus 4 is x plus 5. Okay, we have this. All right. Um, so we continue. We continue. Okay. Right, so um we have this. So what is this? This is therefore minus x squared minus seven x because you have minus six and then if you bring the x it becomes negative, right? And then we have minus nine plus uh, 4, which is minus 5, and then you bring down the other 5, which is minus 10, equals 0. And therefore, which means is x squared plus 7x plus 10 equals what? 0. In which case, um, you have this. So the factors of x squared become x and x. The factors of this becomes 5 and 2, and you have plus, plus. So which means x is minus 5, or x is minus Two. So they said minus five and minus two. So which means therefore at A we have X equal to uh, minus five and here we have uh, X equal to minus two. Okay, so this is what we have. Um, right, so we continue. We continue. Next question. Right, so we have this particular question here. And this question says that the graphs of the functions f of x and g of x are drawn below. Hence, determine uh, the value of c for which the equation, this one, uh, minus into x plus c plus 3 squared plus 4 is equal to x plus c plus 5. It has one negative and one positive root. Okay. So, what is the answer to this? Okay. I had lost Waruna. Okay, never mind even if I lose you because um... This is recorded, so I can lose you sometimes if there's a problem. Okay, if I lose you, this is recorded, so you're not going to miss anything. That is guaranteed. So, I just to take note of that. Right, so we continue with this discussion right now. So, at this point, we have that the graphs intersect at A and B. Hence, determine the values of C. Right, for which the equation has, for which uh, values of C for which this equation has one negative and one positive root. One negative and one positive root. Right. Okay. Right, I just welcomed Marang to a discussion as well. And we're going to be discussing as well with Marang. Uh, Marang is our friend as well. So um, we are continuing our discussion. Uh, once again, this is recorded. So, yeah.
everybody will get the recording of this at the end of the discussion. Um, right. Um, I need to confirm if uh, Marang are able to see our screen. Uh, are you able to see our screen, Marang? Morning, sir. Yes, good morning. And how are you, Marang? I'm good in you, sir. Very well. Uh, I need to confirm if the the screen is visible to you. Is it visible? Yes, sir. All right. We have a question, so what you need to do, you just need to watch because this lesson is recorded. I'm going to send you the recording at the end of the lesson. So, but now you just need to watch and make sure that you, you participate of this lesson. Right. Um, yes. We have the two graphs, um, f of x and g of x, which are drawn below. Uh, the graphs uh, intersect at A and B, so we can see that they intersect at A and also at B. Hence, determine the values of C for which this equation. Okay, look at this equation. And they're saying this equation has one negative and one positive root. Okay, now let's think of this uh, question very carefully and make sure we can make sense of it. But what are the values of C and what is the answer to this question? I know that it's, it's an interesting question. Um, as said, read these questions, where are these questions coming from? They are from this year's June paper. So this year's June paper has set the prelude for the November exam. So there are actually uh, questions pretty much like these already. But the couple of things we need to remember that we actually were able to calculate that this was minus five here. And at B here, we had minus two, okay? We did that. And so now, if the examiner decides um, to equate these two functions, but also this examiner is very clever, is adding C. Okay, if you have this and you add C, and then you have a three that is there, you square everything plus four, You have this one, you have this. Okay, you have these two. What is the examiner doing here? He's actually adding C and then he's equating the two. And then the examiner is saying, if these are, the C has been added, the examiner is then saying f equals g. And then the, examin the examiner is saying, we must find the, value, the values of c for which this equation has one negative and one positive root. Okay, this examiner is translating the graph because if you add a c, the graph is gonna be translated. It's, gonna, it's either gonna move to the right or to the left. So let's understand. Now, if we want that here we have one negative and one positive root. So what does it mean? It means that at the point at which the two graphs intersect, because now they intersect and they intersect at minus five at minus two. How much can we move these graphs by? We can move it by two units, for example. If you move the graphs by two units, then this point B is gonna be like here, all right? And then this point here is gonna be at a minus three, for example, okay? But if you move it by two units, um, this is gonna be there. So you need to now, um, perform further adjustments. And I'm gonna state here exactly what needs to happen. So we state in words. Here's the answer to 5.4. We're just talking before. The graph. Must. Um, shift. So this is a shift or a translation. It is a transformation of the graph must shift more, more than two, and less than five units to the 
the right. Okay, so the graph must shift more than two. So because if it shifts only two, it's gonna be here. So the point P is gonna be like on the y-axis, but so it must shift more than two. Yes, please. Okay, that's fine. So it must shift more than two in less than five units um, to the right. So this means that our C, which demonstrates the shift, is going to actually lie between um, minus five and minus two. Sorry, they said determine the values of, of C. So these are the values of C. Okay, and we've got the answer. So think about it. But this is recorded, so you'll watch these again during your own leisure. Next question. Okay, right. So if you have now this one, what do we do now? Okay, we have graphs and functions. And now I know they're important because I got some discussion. Some students told me that graphs and functions are a little bit interesting. Okay, let's look at this one here. This one was given five marks um, in June this year. So this is this year's June uh, paper for the kids who write in June, uh, Mathematics grade 12, right? There's also write in November, but the, the November paper will be very similar to this one. Okay, we have these two graphs, F and G, they are drawn below. The graphs intersect at A and B. We ask the question, the maximum distance between F and G in the interval. So in the interval XA um, and XB, uh, right is K. If H is G plus K, um, determine the equation of H, um, um, yeah, in the form that H, uh, H of X equals that. What is the answer to that question? Right, so anyone? How do we start? This question, because what do we want? We want the maximum distance. So how do we find the maximum distance? So in the metric exam, because this question is gonna be there. Okay, this question is gonna be there. In the metric exam. Okay, we begin as follows. The distance. The distance becomes f of x minus g of x. Okay, that is the distance because now at this point, we want to say the maximum distance between f and g in the interval is k, right? So we want to find the maximum distance um, between the two functions, right? And so now we can be in a position to find it in a couple of ways. So there can be uh, negativity and positivity, but we note that this is the graph of F and this is G. So in the parts, for instance, like here, we can be able to see that the graph of F is above between A and B and the graph of G is certainly bo uh, below. So we can therefore say F of X minus G of X, in which case, therefore we have the uh, D of X, uh, right? We have the function F of X, um, which is exactly uh, minus into that. Uh, you square these uh, plus four minus. What is the G of X? It is actually X plus five, uh, from which we're able to achieve the D of X. Um, we square everything here. Uh, right, so if we square everything, we have the negative outside. Um, if you square a binomial expression, it becomes exactly um, x squared. The next is x by three by two. x by three is three, x by two is exactly six x. We square three, three by three is nine. We add four, we distribute uh, the brackets by the negative sign. Uh, from which we obtain d of x equals uh, minus x squared uh, minus 6x minus 9 uh, the plus 4 minus x uh, minus 5. So which means uh, the d of x equals uh, minus x squared minus 7x. Okay, so obviously at this point you have minus x squared minus 7x. Okay, so you have minus 9 plus 4 which is minus five minus that, which is minus 10. Okay. 
Okay, so what do we then get at this point? So we want to get the maximum. So at this point, uh, the maximum, uh, right, occurs because this is quadratic, occurs at the x value of the turning point. The turning point is minus b over 2a, which is minus, okay. b is minus seven in the quadratic. So we have minus seven over 2a is minus one. And therefore the answer is exactly uh, seven out of two. After we got this value here, we are able to find uh, the result the examiner wants. So we are able to get the B of seven out of two. Okay, we have the D of X is this one, but the D of X is minus X squared minus seven X minus 10. So it is actually minus into the X is seven over two, which is square uh, minus seven. The X is seven over two. And we have minus 10. As I said, we need to train like soldiers very soon. If you use your calculator, you will see that the answer here is 2.25. And then after this, we are able to see that this is the distance, uh, right? And uh, this distance here is exactly that one. Please note uh, that at this point, uh, this 7 over 2 is negative. So that here you will have a negative as well. Okay. So that you'll have a negative. Let me just write clearly here so that you have the additional negative sign. And everybody understands actually here. Okay. So you have uh, the negative. So you'd have the negative seven over two. And this is actually minus in two. Uh, the X itself is what is minus seven over two right, which you square minus seven, the X is minus seven over two, right? And then you have minus 10 like this. And therefore, if you use your calculator, you realize uh, that this is exactly 2.25, okay? We have this. And then, um, right, so after we got this, we are saying therefore the distance, um, which is the maximum distance between the two functions, is 2.25, okay? So, but they said the maximum distance between f and g in the interval um, x between x a and x b, between the x a and the x b, this distance is, is, is k. So the implication from this is therefore that k itself is a 2.25. Okay, if it is uh, true that it is 2.25, then what is the age? What is the age, right? So it means, therefore, we're able to see that the h of x must be actually in this form. So remember that h of x is g of x plus k and g of x is x plus five. So we're gonna have x plus five, but, but the k is 2.25. And therefore the result is you add this here, it's x plus, uh, what is five plus 2.25? It is actually 7.25 there. So now, we need to determine the equation of age. And so we have found the equation of age. It is actually 7.25, but most importantly, K is 2.25. Okay, we continue. Next question from the 2023 metric exam from the Department of Education. Right, the next question is about finance. Um, right, so finance is also extremely important for us to understand. So this is what they asked in the finance part of the metric exam. And they're speaking about a company that bought a photocopier for um, 150,000 on 1 July, 2022. They will use the old photocopier as a trade in when they replace it with a similar new photocopier in five years time on 30 June um, uh, 2027, okay? So we have exactly that part there. And then we're asking the question, determine the average rate of inflation over the next five years, uh, right? They're saying the rate, the average rate of inflation over the next five years will be 6.5% per annum, determine the price of a similar new photocopier in five years time. Okay, what is the answer to this question? We solve the question together. 
So this one is easy because it's just giving us all the information. They're saying the average rate of inflation over the next five years, um, right, uh, will be 6.5% per annum, and we just need to calculate the price. Okay, so this is what we asked in June. So let's solve this question from the June 2023 metric exam. Okay. So now, in, at this point, there are a couple of things we need to note. We have been given data. What is the data that the examiner gave? So they've given us the present value. Remember, the, the this company bought the photocopier of 150,000 Rand. So which means, therefore, this one is 150,000 Rand. Present value. Right, the average rate of inflation is actually this one here, um, per annum. Okay, so uh, what is the average rate of inflation? It is actually I equals 6.5%. Per annum, you divide this one exactly by 100 and it becomes 0, 0,065. Uh, right, uh, um, per annum. Because percent means you divide by 100. So you get exactly that one. And obviously, we realize that we want to, uh, we've been told that the average rate of inflation over the next uh, five years, so which means N is actually five years. Okay, we are well in business. So now we can continue and find these here. We need to, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to determine the price um, of a similar new photocopier in five years time subject to inflation. So in other words, the price of the photocopier in five years time is gonna be higher. So we're gonna use the appreciation formula with the plus. We expect that inflation means that the prices are going up. Right, so, um, right, so the um, P is 150,000. One plus the uh, I is 0, 0.065. You raise it to the n, and n is actually five years. So you multiply everything here. So if you are able to get these, which is 205-513. Okay, so we have exactly this one. Right, so this is exactly the answer if you use a calculator. So the average price of a new similar photocopier in five years time. So a, the, a new photocopier in five years time will be costing this much. Will be costing that much. So we continue. You're right, we continue. Right, so this is zero five there. Okay. Okay, let's look at the next question. And the next question is very interesting. It's just uh, more finance as well. Right, we have been given the same story um, about the fact that a company bought a photocopier for 150,000 on 1 July 2022. They will use the old photocopier as a trade-in when they replace it um, with a new, a similar new photocopier in five years time on 30 June, um, um, at the end of June, that is, you see, uh, right, uh, 2027. 20, 30 June, obviously, suggests at the end of June. And obviously, the photocopier was bought 1 July 2022. So we're going to use a timeline to interpret this question to make sure that our interpretation is very clear. But we need to calculate the trading value of the old photocopier after five years. If it depreciates at a rate of 9% per annum on a straight line method, what is the trading value of the old photocopier? Right, so the couple of things of just need to consider. So in finance, it's very important to write down the data so that we can decide on which formula to use. Uh, but we have been given here the present value of the photocopier at which um, the price at which it was bought. Uh, it was bought for 150,000 Rand. So, which means, therefore, this is 150,000 Rand. Okay, next, we actually look at the fact that 
we have the um, rate of depreciation. It, de it depreciates at 9% per annum. So, which means this one is actually 9% per annum. 9% means 9 over 100 per annum, which is 0 0.09. So in the end, then, um, so N is five years. So, which means, we have the straight line method, depreciation according to the straight line method. It means that we're just, we're just gonna use simple interest. Okay, this one is simple interest uh, and we're looking at the straight line method also called the simple interest depreciation method 150 what is the i at the interest rate is 0 0.09 we divide the nine percent by 100 and the number of years is five years you use your calculator to do the calculation here. And then now if you open up the brackets, you can multiply it through by the 150,000, getting 150,000 times one, and then 150,000 times that. So at this point, uh, it means what? It means therefore you have 150,000. You multiply this with that, uh, which is that. So, which means that it is 82, 500. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. I'll get the trading value of the old photocopy. So, the trading value of the old photocopy will actually be this one. It is exactly 82,500, okay? So we have answered this finance question. Next question. Okay, you're gonna have a chance to um, um, watch this question. Right, so now they are looking at the same, a similar question is an extension of the question. Is an extension of the question. A company bought a photocopier for 150,000 rand on 1 July um, 2022. They will use the old photocopier as a trade-in when they replace it with a new, uh, with rather a similar new uh, photocopier in five years time on 30 June 2027. The company set up a sinking fund. So now we are discussing sinking funds. It set up a sinking fund to cover the replacement cost of the new photocopier. The fund earns interest at a rate of 7.85% per annum, comp uh, compounded monthly. The company made its first monthly deposit on 31 July 2022 and will continue to do so until 31 May 2027. One month prior to the new, prior to the new photocopier being bought, okay, how much should be deposited at the end of each month so that the company will be able to buy the new photocopier? So we want to know um, right, how much should be deposited at the end of each of each month. So normally we are seeing X is a question mark in the formulas we're using at the end of each month. Okay, so we are looking for the X over there. Okay, so we continue. We're looking for the X. Right, the question therefore is at this point, what is the sinking fund? What is the sinking fund? So 
We note that this sinking fund, SF, is the same as the following. Right, so it is the same as the final amount minus the trading value. What is the final amount? We got the final amount from the previous question A. We got it to be 205513. So we know that it is actually 205513 minus T, the trade in value. We got it from the previous question using the straight line reducing method, which is A2500. We subtract these two guys. What answer are we getting? One, two, three, zero, one, three. Um, okay, we've got the sinking fund. We've got the sinking fund. So what do we do now that we have the sinking, the sinking fund? What do we do with the sinking fund SF? Right, we actually are able to realize that the sinking fund is actually a future value. And therefore we shall have the future value, which is the future value formula, which is this one here, which is one plus I to the power N minus one. You divide everything by what? You divide everything by I like this. And so let's do substitutions um, here. So we substitute the everything here. What is the uh, uh, sinking fund, which is the future value? So it is one, two, three, zero, one, three is equal to X. What is the I? Um, Right, remember that um, the fund ends interest, the sinking fund ends interest at a rate of 7.85% per annum, right? But is compounded monthly. So which means therefore, we're gonna divide this one by 100. Um, if we do that, we have zero comma, zero seven eight five. Okay, it's compounded monthly, so you divide by 12. Then you raise this to the power. What power? You need to think about this. But a couple of things are very important, right? That the company made its first monthly deposit. When was the first monthly deposit made? Um, on 31 July, 2022. Okay, it was bought. The photocopy was bought the first of July, but they made, the company made its first monthly deposit um, on 31 July, 2022. And it will continue from 31 July 2022. And it will continue to do so until the end of May 2027. Okay. So if it's until the end of May um, 2027, right, you need to look at what this means. And you need to look at obviously at the number of the years there. So it tells you that at this point, you have the year 2022, not exactly um, at the beginning of it, but you have 2027, so it's just about five years. But you need to count very carefully. It's about five years because if you take 2027 and you subtract 2022, you will get five years. Okay, but taking into account that it's not really um, the full 2022, um, the whole thing started in the middle um, of, uh, of, of the year, right? So, um, and, they, and therefore, and also now in 2027, it's not the whole um, 2027, it's actually until the end of May, um, 31 May. 
And so then the question, the question then becomes um, how many months will those be? So in other words, uh, you realize that uh, it's actually because if it was a full cycle, okay? So if it was a full cycle, if you start from July and you end in July, all right, so how many months will those be? Okay, from 31 July 2022, how many months were up to the end of the year? Okay, and also up to the um, 31 May, end of May, how many months into, into the end of this? Okay, but most importantly, how many payments here? Okay, so in other words, there's gonna be a payment 31 July. And there's gonna be a payment end of the next month. So you have July, August, September, October, November, December. Okay, so this is gonna apply for the year 2022. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, July, August, September, October, November, December. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So it gives a total of six payments here. Okay. And then now into 2027, you have up to May. So how many months are those um, in May? Uh, in, in 2027. So you would start in the year 2027. So yeah, let me just write 2022 here. Right, you have seen that there's gonna be 31 July. There's gonna be um, August. There's gonna be September. There's gonna be October. There's gonna be November. There's gonna be December. And then now you have 2027, right? So it's January, it's February, February is March, uh, right? So is April, then is May. All right, so we have this. Right, we are finishing this question quickly. I'm just analyzing the periods. I just need to make sure that you can, be, normally they do this in the, in the exam. So you might get your periods wrong. You might be having a couple of ways that are easier for you to uh, have uh, calculate the periods here. So this is February. And this is March, April. So obviously here, it gives a total of one. You can do one, two, three, four, five, six. So because you have been told that the company made its first monthly deposit into this. So in other words, you have a six payments here. And here, the same, you have one, two, three, four, five. So in 2027, you have five payments. Okay, so now um, you have those payments there. Um, right, you have a total of therefore 11 payments. So you have 11 payments here all together. But uh, remember that these are just the months uh, that are between the years. So now this is 2022, that's 2027. But you know that the years are 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026. And then you have 2027. So we're interested now in the years one, Full years, one, two, three. There are four full years. So in four years, N is four years plus 11, uh, 11 months. What is four years? Four years is four by 12 in terms of the months. So it means, therefore, that you take this one to here. So n, therefore, is 4 by 12 plus 11, which is 48 plus 11, which is exactly 
59 uh, months. All right, so in other words, N is going to be 59. Minus one. We divide everything by. Okay, so we have this one here. Now there are a couple of ways to do this question. Right, so you have the I in the bottom of this uh, formula for the future value. So it is exactly 0, 0, 0.0785. So you divide everything by 12. Okay, because it's um, compounded monthly. Oh, I left some space here. Right, so what we're getting before is that we have from the previous page, one, two, three. 0, 0.13 is equal to um, exactly uh, the x into right um, 1 plus uh, 0, 0, 0.0785. So you divide everything by 12 because it's compounded monthly. It's 59 payments here, uh, minus 1. You divide everything by 0, 0, 0.0785. You divide everything by 12. So we want to get the answer. And so to get the answer, you'd have 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 3 into 0, 0, 0.0785 divided by 12, which is x into. 1 plus 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Okay, and you divide entirely by um, the following into 1 plus 0, 0, 0, 0.0785. You divide by 12 into you have 59 here, you subtract 1, and that is x. Right, so the conclusion therefore x is so if you use our calculator from this, uh, we're able to get the actual answer. Right, so the actual answer will be um, in rents. So it's actually 1,704 rand and zero one. So we have 1,704 rand and um, actually uh, one um, cent. And so that is what we're getting here. And that is the answer. So we've been asked this question. And we started by using the future value formula because with the sinking fund, but we need to know that the sinking fund, what is the formula for the sinking fund? The sinking fund can be seen as the final um, amount minus the paid in value. So that gives us the sinking fund. And we substitute the sinking fund because the sinking fund is a future value. So we use the future value formula there. Okay, so there are a couple of nodes um, to take down here when dealing with seeking fund calculations. Next question. Right, so there's a guy called Andrew. Today, Andrew borrowed 200,000 rand from a bank. The bank charges interest at 5.25% per annum, but is compounded quarterly. Andrew will make repayments of 6,000 rand at the end of every three months, um, his first repayment will be made in three months from now. How long in years will it take Andrew to settle the loan? Okay, let's look at this one. Let's look at exactly this question here. Okay, this one is a loan question. So now loans are present values. So if the examiner mentions a loan, it means we're speaking of money and money that is available now. So it's a present value. Present value is x into 
1 minus 1 plus i divided by i. Okay, Andrew borrowed how much money? Now, Andrew borrowed exactly 200,000. So you can start quickly and say, okay, Andrew, there's 200,000 that Andrew actually borrowed. We have the repayments are called X, right? So this 200,000 is the present value. So this one is 6,000 into one minus. One plus, what is I? I is uh, this one here, 5.25%. 5 5 so it's actually, you divide this, but it's compounded quarterly. So you divide this one by 100. But dividing 5.25 by 100 gives us uh, 0, 0.0525. You divide everything by 4 because it's quarterly. You consider the period. Right, so Andrew will make the payments of this at the end of every three months because it's quarterly, it means every three months. His first repayment will be made in three months from now. He's gonna make his first repayment in three months from now. How long in years will it take Andrew to settle the loan? Okay, right, so we have these. We have these. So now here we don't know how long in years. So we're gonna multiply n by four here, and we actually divide everything by i. I is uh, our interest rate, in the, and therefore the interest rate is actually zero comma zero five two five. You divide everything by four. So right. So if you um, divide, you multiply everything. So if you cross multiply, multiply this one by this and divide by 6,000, you'll get seven out of 16 is equal to one minus um, one plus zero comma zero, five to five. You divide everything by four and you have minus four N. Okay, so you have this. Um, so, what do we get? So you have nine out of 16, which equals 16 to one divided by 1,000. Uh, so, um, if you simplify everything here, simplify everything within the, within the parentheses, you're able to get 16 to one, divided by 1,600, and you're able to raise everything to the power minus 4n. Okay. Goodness me. Minus 4n. You have the log. 9 out of 16. The log. 16, And then, okay, if you use the log, then you can take the log of this um, divided by the log of that. You can uh, do it in a couple of ways. You do understand that? Okay, it's okay, right. Um, right, if you take, um, this becomes minus four n equals the log of this divided by the log of that. Use a calculator. It becomes minus forty four comma one two four three. You divide through by four, which means is minus forty four comma one two four three. You divide it by minus four which means n is n is 11 comma 0 3 years so how many years will it take it will take andrew 11 comma 0 3 years to settle to settle the loan so it will take him 
um, 11,03 years to settle, settle the loan. Okay, so we have this one. Next question. All right, the next question that came in June 2023 is obviously these are pretty straightforward and I know that um, it's one of those sections where um, students scoop the most marks. Um, if you're speaking about calculus and optimization, the students really scoop up uh, distinctions in this area. And let's just see how well you can scoop the marks here. Determine f primed of x from first principles and the rest of the questions on the derivatives and the rules of differentiation there. Question seven came in June, 2023. And now we shall be in a position to solve each question. I've broken this question down to digestible pieces. We look first at 7.1. Right, 7.1 is about the first principles of differentiation. Right, so this one. F primed becomes the limit as h tends to zero, as h approaches zero of f into x plus h minus f of x or divided by h. This is the limit this h tends to zero. The f at x plus h, wherever there is uh, x, you put x plus h in, into the function. So this is minus two into x plus h squared minus one, minus two x squared minus one. You divide everything by h. And this is the limit. As h approaches zero, you have minus two into, if you square these, it becomes x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Okay, so it distributes, it becomes 2x squared plus 1, which you divide by h. So, which is the limit as h uh, tends to 0. So, this is minus 2x squared uh, minus 4xh uh, minus 2h squared uh, minus 1 plus uh, double x squared plus one, and uh, all this is divided by h. So we have the limit as h tends to zero here. So what is this? Right, what is this? So, um. Okay, we have this. We divide everything by h. And this is the limit as h approaches zero. So you have, um, you can plot a common factor h here. And if you do so, you get minus four x within the parenthesis and you have minus two h. You divide by h. You cross everything out. This is the limit as h approaches zero. So it's minus 4x minus 2h. As h tends to zero, it becomes minus 4x minus two times zero. So you continue and you write the final answer here, which means f primed of x is the same as minus 4x minus 0 and therefore the answer is a friend is minus 4x okay we have this one here all right so this is uh what we uh have found and the answer is exactly minus 4x so from the first principles of differentiation so this is one way to do it but there are a couple of other ways to solve this problem Right, so uh, right, so this is okay, and we continue to solve more and more questions um, uh, as we move along. All right. Okay, the next question uh, that came in June this year is about how to find the derivative of this function here. How to find the derivative of this function here? 
right f prime so um we use uh, the power rule what does the power rule say right it says that x to the power n implies that uh, dy dx is n x to the n minus one so which means f prime of x is three by minus two which is minus six x squared plus six uh, x so that is the answer so at this point uh, if you have this and uh, we get the result okay minus six x squared plus six x and this is the answer to the question next one Okay, yeah, um, we have to do this one as well. And let us get the answer uh, to this question. So, which means this one here is y equals two uh, x. Then uh, in the denominator, you can spread this one into the square root of four, the square root of x. So this is two x. The square root of four is uh, two then the square root of x. So this is actually two x. And then you have one half. You can write uh, um, that one like this. And this is one half, the x to minus one half. Good. So let's find a derivative of this. So the derivative dy dx, the derivative of 2x, okay, the power is one there. So now you bring down the one x and then you subtract like this. Okay, so you have this one here, uh, plus uh, one half. Minus this, and you subtract one from this. So it's uh, minus uh, this, the to one like this. So um, it means dy dx minus one quarter minus three over two. Okay. This is what we get, but we can write everything with the positive indices. It's nicer to write it with positive indices. For um, our dy dx, it becomes two minus uh, one over four x uh, to the three over two. So that is the answer. Right. So at this point, uh, we're able to find the answer, and this is the answer for two marks. Next question. 1.3 is an interesting one. The graph y equals f prime has a minimum turning point um, at, uh, at one and minus three. Determine the values of x for which f is concave down. For which f is concave down. Right. So, um, this is an interesting question. Okay. I'm gonna give you two minutes to try this question. I'm gonna give you two minutes, okay, each one of you. I'm gonna, each one of you, what do you think about this question? Okay. Okay, I'm giving you two minutes. So you will let me know what you think. Okay. 
right? <laughs> so when you're done, you let me know. Right? So, right, I'm giving you a chance. Okay. Who wants to try? Okay. Anyone? Anyone home? There's no one home. <laughs> All right, you're afraid. Some of you guys are scared. Because now, okay, there are some notes. There are some notes that um, there are some notes that I want to give to you. What are the notes? Okay, there are some notes. This question is going to be there in November. But I did not get an answer from you guys. So I'm worried, you know. I'm very worried. But there's a table you need to learn. The table is like this. Okay. Because if you have notes, then you can never go wrong. Yeah, Bob. You can never go wrong. You will go right always. Always. So now, you can have this one here. F prime of x is negative, but also F prime of x is positive. So, which means that if it if it is f prime of x is negative, this case is the case where the second derivative of x is positive. So you can have here the second derivative of x is negative. Okay, we continue. For this one here, it's concave up, concave up. For it's concave up, concave up. Okay, in other words, if the second derivative for the inflection points is positive, there is concave up, concave up. Okay, so it can also be concave down when the derivative is negative. The second derivative is negative. But the second derivative can be negative and the first derivative being positive. Okay, but if the second derivative is negative, it means that it is concave down. Concave down. Concave down. Okay, this is the table. So once you know this table, then you are done. What does the examiner is saying f is concave down. So if f is concave down, they are speaking about the fact that 
there. That means the second derivative of x is what? Is negative. Okay, so it's concave down. But you need to determine the values of x for which f is concave down. Okay. Okay, all right. Is Waruna here? I think I lost Waruna. That's what I mean. Okay, I lost Warun. Okay, that's fine. I'm just checking there. Uh, because he's not there on the those who are connected. So determine the values of X for which F is concave down. So if F is concave down, then it means that we are looking at the part here with the second derivative is negative. But it can mean that the First derivative is negative or the first derivative is positive. Okay. Now, so you continue. Okay. So let's do this. Determine the values of x for which f is concave down. But remember that y equals, the graph of y equals um, the first derivative, y primed of uh, f primed of x, has a minimum turning point at 1 minus 3. So if the graph y um, equals f primed. In other words, is the graph of the first derivative, not just the graph of what? Um, not just the graph of, the, of f. Okay. So obviously here we are saying f is this. You are saying f is concave up. We are saying f is concave down. We are saying f is this. But the examiner here, is not just referring to the graph of f, but is saying the graph of the first derivative has a minimum turning point at this point. So now, if it has a minimum turning point at one minus three, you need to find the values of x for which f is concave up. Okay, when f is concave down, excuse me, so it's like this. But now, what do you know about the first derivative, f primed, okay? So if it's concave down, the first derivative can be either negative or, or positive, right? But at this point, it, you have that this one has a minimum turning point. It has a minimum turning point, right? If it has a minimum turning point, it means a couple of things. All right, it means a couple of things because if the graph once again is concave down, it means that you have this kind of a shape for the graph of F, right? So if you have that kind of a shape for the graph of F um, for when it's concave down, um, right? But the examiner is then saying, um, Y equals F primed has a minimum turning point. Minimum turning point means that um, you have this. Then the turning point is there. The turning point is there. All right. So if the turning point is there, now the examiner is then saying you need to determine the values of x for which f is concave down. Right. And so obviously the answer is very clear now. Um, I'm sure, but you need to obviously think about it. Um, it means, therefore, if this is the minimum turning point at this point, right? So it means, therefore, x 
must be less than one. It means x must be less than one because you need to determine the values of x for which f is concave down. And so um, if f is concave down, it means therefore um, x must be less than one. All right, so um, because in other words, you are considering the part if the minimum turning point is at this point, Right, and this is the graph of f primes of x. Right, and now the graph of f prime of x has a minimum turning point at this point. What does that mean? Right, it means obviously um, you need to determine the values of x which is concave down. So x, the answer is x less than uh, one. So in other words, you must consider the part that is before that. Okay, there are a couple of ways to think about this question. But um, that is one way to analyze that. That's one way to analyze that. But also, if the examiner says the graph, uh, this one, f prime has a minimum turning point at one minus three, it means a couple of things, right? Because if the graph is like this, how can you draw the graph of f? Because it means here the derivative is what? Is decreasing, 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 decreasing. And then here the derivative is what? Um, is actually increasing, 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 increasing. All right, so that is the kind of experience you actually are seeing. So how does that relate um, to the graph um, of, of F? Right, so in other words, the graph of F should be somehow like this, okay? The graph of F should be somehow like this, and therefore the value of X for which it is concave down will actually be essentially when x itself is less than one. Think about this and make sure you understand that. Next one. Right, um, I'm gonna take a break now because this is a brand new question, it's a full question. I'm gonna take a break because I started at 9 a.m. I know very well that um, 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 the other one, um, Marang joined us in the middle. Okay, she started at about 10, but I actually had the rest of the crew uh, much earlier. So um, I will actually make time available um, to continue with our discussion. Um, right, I ordinarily, this discussion must last for two hours. Um, right, um, I actually, one of the, well, one learner left obviously because she felt the, she was, she got disconnected, the, her network was bad. Right, so, um, we need to meet again. Um, you let me know when, because in particular, Marang, uh, Marang, yes, um, is it, we're supposed to have one extra hour. For example, we need two hours, um, right? And so we have to apportion the time and see how much time therefore we can allocate uh, to continue with our discussion and to um, see what else we can do. This is a full question from the June 2023 paper. Um, we'll chat then on WhatsApp obviously at different times. I'm going to pause this video in the next couple of minutes, okay? I'm going to pause this video in the next couple of minutes so you can access the video. But I must thank you for joining us for now and take good, get, uh, good care. We shall talk to Marang and see when we can discuss what time and when. Um, but we shall talk to Mpo as well. We need to work extra hard. But thank you guys for joining us. Um, we'll chat then on WhatsApp. Thank you and goodbye. Bye, sir. Okay, bye, guys. <laughs> bye, Mpo and Marang. Bye. Bye, guys.